The Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng has just unveiled this package of tax cuts, the biggest since 1972. Bonds and sterling, though, have tanked today, and it's nothing to do with dollar strength. It's all about trustonomics today. We're, this is Bloomberg. Clarify for the markets for us. Kwasi Kwarteng says the markets will react as they will. Does this government care about markets? Well, if you'll indulge me for just one second, what, what we've announced today is a package for growth that has three big components. It has uh, an expensive component uh, about protecting households and businesses from the cost of energy this winter. Uh, and that, that, that costs a lot, but... Um, we think that's the right decision. It helps the economy because it maintains confidence and it reduces some of the loss of capability that we would see if we don't protect businesses. Um, so, so that's one part of the package. Uh, secondly, as you say, uh, this government believes in tax cuts, believes in driving economic growth, growing the size of the cake uh, and using that to fund both debt reduction over the medium term as well as high quality public services. So we make no apology for that. It's really important that we have a competitive economy that grows. And thirdly, uh, we're unleashing infrastructure. We all know that big projects in this country take too long, too many different pieces of red tape, too much planning, too many restrictions on long term investment. So those are the, sorry, forgive me, it's a long answer, but those are the three components of today's package. Uh, and yes, of course, we care about financial stability in the medium term. Uh, some of the packages we've announced on energy today, that protecting households and businesses, will also reduce the headline rate of inflation in the United Kingdom. That's something the Independent Bank of England can take into account as they set interest rates. Uh, and it's also something that will protect the economy. But what's happening in gilts and currency markets matters for how much these measures will cost. Government borrowing in August in the latest data was already running at twice the level forecast in March, mainly because interest rates are rising so sharply. As a result of this package, the Bank of England is now expected to hike by 100 basis points in November. That's what markets are pricing. In other words, they think these measures will be inflationary. How can this package be affordable? Yeah, I think we've seen central banks actually in all of the developed world increase rates. I think I saw an article on Bloomberg. Uh, about 70 different central banks have all uh, adopted a tighter uh, monetary policy. Um, what's important is how we spend this money. So it is costing. No one's shying away from the fact. I think a debt management office has put out new guidance on the profile of issuance. And of course, that's going to have an impact on the market. No one is stepping away from that. But it does two things. One, it protects the economy by protecting households and businesses this winter, without which I think we'd be talking uh, about much more challenging risk of recession. Uh, and secondly, we're investing in economic growth over the, over the cycle. Uh, that's partly reducing tax rates on lots of different groups, including cutting the stamp duty on house price purchases to help the housing market at a time uh, when perhaps interest rates on mortgages are going to increase. But this uh, change in Bank of England rate hike expectations is down to this mini-budget. Before the announcement from Kwasi Kwarteng, markets saw 75 basis points. After it, they saw 100 basis points. You cannot deny that this has changed expectations on its own for the Bank of England. Well, we've seen a number of announcements in fairness this week, including the energy package for business uh, only 48 hours ago. So well, clearly the market's got to digest that. The market will do its job. But going into this, uh, the UK is in a good shape financing uh, wise. We have the second lowest debt as a percentage of GDP of any of the G7 major economies. Uh, we are able to finance the record amounts that governments borrowed during COVID. Uh, of course, these are important considerations. That's one reason why the Chancellor has committed to the usual OBR forecast in the second half of this year, uh, and that'll be published before the end of this calendar year. So we've got our eye on medium term financial stability as well. But today, and the urgency of getting these packages out before the end energy prices hit for the winter was protecting consumers, protecting businesses. That means we're protecting the British economy. And then a whole measure, and there'll be further announcements in the coming weeks and months, as to how we're going to grow the economy. The big perennial question that we've had and the reason why the trend rate of growth in the UK has not been as strong as it should be and why every sinew, myself and this government, is to try and get that trend rate of growth back up again. But you say that the fiscal watchdog, the Office for Budget Responsibility, will be given the chance to scrutinise this later in the year. It wasn't allowed to do it immediately, despite the scale of these Just tax because cuts. we had to move for speed. That, that forecast will come. The, the Office um, for Budget we, Responsibility said it had time, but it wasn't allowed. 
well, we had to move as fast as we could. And, and you know, given the period of mourning we've had, this is the very early days of this government. Uh, over the course of the summer, our new Prime Minister set out her plan for growth. Uh, and what today Parliament has heard is what is the shape of that, of that growth. Of course, people will make their own decisions about that. Uh, but I think the measures in there, the measures to help first-time buyers, uh, to help people who are sitting, you know, driving home from work tonight in traffic jams, knowing that their local road hasn't been upgraded as fast as it should be, bringing forward those incredibly investable energy projects uh, that we can see all around us, both uh, renewables, uh, but also some of the onshore hydrocarbon resources that we can still maximise at this time of acute energy crisis. We just need to get some of those things done. We're in the middle of a cost of living crisis. The Chancellor's tax cuts to income tax mean that an individual earning £200,000 is going to save £4,500 in tax next year compared to this year, while a worker on £20,000 rather will save £218. Is that fair? Well, everybody will benefit from economic growth because that's what drives the size of the, the, the pie to get bigger. Uh, everybody who's in work will benefit from these tax cuts. Of course, if you're paying more tax uh, and the rate reduces, uh, then you'll benefit slightly more than that. But there are tax cuts for first-time home buyers, uh, and this is all on top of the significant amount of protection that every household will receive from putting in place those protections on energy prices to get businesses and consumers through the winter. You're behind in the polls. Voters didn't pick Liz Truss as Prime Minister themselves. You've got an election in 2024. Is this a gamble with the economy to prolong your time in office? It's all about growth. It's about how we grow the economy. It's how we, how we share, allow people to keep more of the fruits of their own work uh, by reducing taxes uh, for every household in work.